If you use Stream Deck with Ecamm Live, then you might be interested to get a sneak peek at how I use the two of them together and how I've got my Ecamm Live profile set up on Stream Deck. Hello, welcome to Take One Tech. My name's Alec. Now, all of you know what a big fan I am of Stream Deck. Now, I do have my Loop Deck on order and it is arriving on, uh, I think, Sunday, I think, on the 1st. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But for now, I am still a total fan of the Stream Deck. And to be honest, I don't think the Loop Deck's going to sway me. I do like the tactile keys that you have on the Stream Deck as opposed to just being a touchscreen. But we will see. I will reserve judgment until I have it in my hands. But I posted in the uh, community tab of my YouTube channel uh, about the uh, the two pages of my uh, Ecamm Live profile that I have to show the sort of icons and the way I have it set up. And a few of you have asked to actually see the video run through of how I have everything set up. So that's what this is for. And incidentally, the community tab is uh, something that is new to my channel as I've reached that threshold where you're allowed to use it. So I will be using it for polls and things like that to see what sort of videos and things like that that you want me to make. So uh, look forward to interacting with some of you there. But for now, let's just get straight over, shall we, and have a look at my uh, Stream Deck profile. Incidentally, I will be making these icons available on my store at takeonetech.io slash store. Uh, so feel free to head over there and grab them from there but let's look at the icons first of all shall we uh, so here is my uh, stream deck and uh, basically I've got two pages of icons this is my first page <laughs> and this is my second page uh, there is actually a third page but to be honest the third page is a bit of a mess and it's a bit of a sandbox where I just play around with different things that I'm not necessarily using uh, all of at the same time or in my main workflow, I should say. <laughs> uh, now, in actual fact, the second page is more the page that I'd be on with my live streams and stuff that I don't tend to use quite as much. Uh, and then the uh, first page is more sort of for the recordings and stuff that I use a little bit more frequently. Although some of them, I've got to say, are new and I'll explain those uh, and uh, what they're for, although I haven't actually used them in anger, as it were, <laughs> so to speak. But let's start with uh, the, the first one and I'll basically just run through all of these. Some of these are just the built-in functions that that you get with Ecamm Live, with the Ecamm Live plugin, uh, but I've obviously just changed the icons. Uh, you do get icons as part of the plugin, but what I found was if you've got, um, <clears throat> for example, the scene icon to switch scenes, that's fine, but if you've, if you've got multiple different scenes, then it's not necessarily clear which scene you are going to. So I wanted a way to make it a lot more intuitive so that I knew exactly what I was doing. So let's start by, uh, well, let's start at the top, shall we? <laughs> now, this orange uh, home button is my uh, button to get back to my home profile in, in, uh, in Stream Deck. So that's where basically I just link to all of my other different profiles. And that button is common basically in every single profile I've got. Um, and so, yeah, that's as simple as that. It's nothing to do with Ecamm Live. <laughs> Next one is my, uh, it might look like uh, an, an end screen, funnily enough. And that's because that is what that signifies. It signifies the uh, the end of the um, uh, of the, 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 the recording. And that's what I press when I do actually want to end the recording. Now, what you'll notice as well with this uh, this button here is it's got sort of like, a, it's supposed to signify an overlay. So there's quite a few buttons that are like this. So this one next to it is like that. These ones down here, where it basically looks like a two layer effect. And that's to signify that these are some kind of overlay. Uh, then there is others that are more like screens. And then there are others that this one looks like a monitor. Uh, so it's just supposed to signify something that's either system wide or sort of a, related to the uh, screen itself itself. Hopefully these will make a little bit more sense as we go through them. But in any case, so yes, we're almost starting at the end because this is what I press to end my uh, my recordings. Uh, so it's obviously looks like my end screen. <laughs> uh, and then when I press it, it doesn't actually end immediately. It takes me through to a folder. So this was a little trick that somebody mentioned in the community, in the Ecamm Live community, uh, because somebody, uh, Carly, had asked for um, how we could basically end a, live, end a live stream or a recording with a double press so that we didn't inadvertently end end the stream or the recording uh, and I was thinking about some overly complex solutions and somebody in the group just mentioned well you could just use a folder so you have to press it to get into the folder and then you press the button to end so I've created this button to end but actually that button is not just a, a simple end button it is in fact a multi-action because what this one does is it actually changes scene. So I've basically just gone into Ecamm Live in the Ecamm Live plugin. And then where are we here? Uh, and then I've uh, gone to a specific scene, run scene. And that is basically running my end scene. 
scene <laughs> or end screen scene uh, and then it has a delay and the delay is 20 seconds because that's how long you've got to put up your uh, cards your end cards in uh, in youtube for so it delays for 20 seconds uh, and then after 20 seconds it's uh, the go live button from uh, the ecamm live group uh, because that basically it's either go live if you are have your uh, your ecamm live set to the output to be to go live somewhere uh, if you are recording then that button will change to be record and if you are either going live or recording then what it will do is it will just end the uh, end the recording so that's what we want it to do here we want it to end the recording uh, so that's why i've got that in there so that is a three-step multi-action that changes to the scene and ends the recording after 20 seconds and i have got it in that nested folder just so that i can't inadvertently press it so <laughs> that's what that one is for uh, now this one here is basically my sort of title sequence so where i've got that sort of animation at the beginning with the little spinning uh, uh, <laughs> colors and then the sort of clapperboard I, I am actually thinking of just doing away with that altogether uh, but i'm just going to think of a way of putting something slightly different and uh, a lot shorter in there uh, but i haven't figured that out so for now we're stuck with it but i'd be interested to hear your thoughts <laughs> on that it's because i did a video recently where i uh, i left the the, uh, the intro out altogether uh, and then some Somebody just commented that they preferred it like that so uh, I can see why because it is just uh, some extra time out of everybody's precious uh, time in people's days so but in any case the way that I actually start the recording though is I press this big record button here uh, wait it's not big it's the same size as all the others but you know what I mean <laughs> so I press this record button and what that actually does is it uh, triggers the music that I have going on in the background. So for my little intro sequence where I say, you know, what the video is about and who it's for, uh, there's some background music. And so what it does is it triggers that music to start playing. The music is just within Ecamm Live. Uh, and then it presses the record button. So it starts the music, starts recording, and I uh, start doing my little intro. So when I finish my little intro, I then move my finger across one place to the left uh, onto that next button. Uh, and that is basically three actions. And what that one does is it switches to my scene, which is my sort of intro title sequence, title sequence. But then there's a slight delay of a second because it sometimes takes a while for that one to actually start. Uh, and then after a second, it stops the background music and that I had playing for my uh, my spoken introduction. So that basically is stopping the music and starting the title sequence. So that's what that is and why it is a multi-action. Incidentally, the reason why I have my end sequence uh, trigger is right up at the top here is because I can just reach down to my stream deck and I always know exactly where it is because my top left is always my home button and so I know that I just put my hand there and then move one to the left and I can always stop the stream without uh, looking. Although I still seem to look quite a lot. I don't know why. I know, I know exactly where it is but sometimes I do find myself still looking but that's the theory anyway and so that is the uh, record and the title sequence now this next one along is basically if i want a do-over <laughs> this channel is called take one tech because i do everything in one take and in theory it is on the first take as well but if there's anything that i'm going to fluff it is my first line it is the one where i talk about this is what the video is because once i actually get into the video I've got no problem like now i'm just talking to you my friends about what i'm actually uh, what i've got set up on my stream deck there's no need for any edits there's no need for any retakes or anything like that i'm just going to talk you through this however those little bits just at the beginning where i say if you this that or the other then you need to watch xyz <laughs> I often find that uh, I don't quite know what I'm saying in those and sometimes I'll just reel into them without having given it quite enough thought and then part way through I just think that's a load of nonsense <laughs> and so sometimes I'll fluff those and I'll have to go around again I mean often I just leave the nonsense in but sometimes it just doesn't make sense and so I noticed that I was basically stopping uh, a few times and so I thought right well rather than uh, rather than do all this stuff manually I'll just create a button that's basically like go again <laughs> basically so that's what this button is here some little behind the scenes uh, secrets here it's not not necessarily always first take <laughs> there's sometimes you can usually tell when I fluffed it because then I'm just laughing when I come up uh, into the actual introduction but anyway this one is four actions though because if you think about what's going on at the time that I need to do this uh, we've got some music going in the background because it's my part of my introduction um, and then also we're obviously recording so this one is actually a four action multi-action 
And what it does is the first thing it does is stop the music. We don't need any music playing. Uh, the next thing it does is it uses the uh, go live button, which is in effect stop when you are actually mid recording. So that stops. Now, when you end a recording in Ecamm Live, what it does is it ends the recording and then you'll see it thinking a little bit and then it pops up a little pop up on the screen that says, do you want to upload this to YouTube? Do you want to view the file or are you okay you want to be done with it uh, and so you have to normally go and click on that or press enter or whatever uh, but actually the go live button does just get rid of that pop-up so this for action thing here basically it stops the background music it ends the recording it waits a little while for ecamm to just do its little bit of processing uh, and then it just presses the uh, the go live button again which just gets rid of the, that little pop-up and so it's then basically everything's reset ready to record again I don't actually have it starting the recording again because I want to know exactly when I am going to be, uh, when, when it will be restarting again. So that's what that button is. It's basically like kind of like recording reset. Uh, and then I can just move my finger back over to the other side uh, and then click the record again to, uh, to say something a little bit better. <laughs> so uh, that's what that is. Then the next one along is the pause button. And this is basically just a single action. It is just the pause button that you've got in the uh, Ecamm interface there, in the Ecamm plugin rather. Uh, and that's just enables you to pause your recording. Uh, and I do use that one occasionally, not so often, but just occasionally. If I've, uh, uh, well, if I need to pause for wh whatever reason, somebody's knocking at the door <laughs> or whatever it happens to be. Uh, so that's what I, uh, I have that one there for as well. Next one along is show and hide the UI. Uh, and this is show and hide the UI of Ecamm Live. Uh, so if I just pop into live demo mode, you can see my uh, screen here. I'll just zoom in on this bit. Thanks again, Phil, for the little tip on that. Uh, and then, yeah, basically the show and hide UI button is here. Uh, and what this means is all these little uh, things that you've got around the screen on Ecamm Live, if I use the hide UI button, you see it just moves those all out of the way. So that's a really handy little thing just to uh, sort of clear the view, especially if you are sort of laying out uh, scenes or things like that, uh, or if you're sort of mid broadcast and you want to uh, basically do use uh, preview mode down here to uh, create some scene or something like that, uh, then it's sometimes good just to be able to get the UI out of the way. So that is what that one is for. So uh, the next one along is the um, is basically next page. So there is a default icon that comes in for that in um, in uh, uh, Stream Deck <laughs> that when you add an extra page to your profile, then uh, it will just put a little arrow there. But I obviously, of course, I did have to make a consistent looking icon. Uh, and so that is my little depiction of uh, Stream Deck uh, with all the little buttons. And that is the arrow to show that this is going to the next profile. And if I go to the next profile, you'll see, oh, sorry, next page of the profile. You'll see that I've also got a similar one here for back. So that is next page and previous page. One row done. <laughs> now on to the next row. So the uh, the next row is, um, this is when you, I just go into live demo mode, like I just have. In fact, let me just jump ahead actually, because down here is live demo mode. So that's what this button here is. Uh, and it's intended, hopefully it should be quite obvious what that is that is a computer monitor and then here we've got ecamm live the ecamm live window and then we've also got the little uh, windows around it like all the different scenes windows and so on that's what that to me signifies so that i know that that is live demo mode it's going to show all of the ecamm live interface so if i want to go into live demo mode i press that button uh, and then uh, when i'm in live demo mode uh, now what i'm doing is i can actually just zoom in on a particular part of the screen by pressing down the control key and zooming in uh, but sometimes the control key and the keyboard isn't necessarily to hand so i've basically just added that here as a uh, separate key in itself onto the stream deck uh, and so that is what that's for it's basically just the control key and if i press that i can zoom in and out by uh, holding down the uh, let me come out of live demo mode now <laughs> so i basically i know where that is all the time it's uh, down the uh, the uh, left hand side uh, second from the bottom and I just go into live demo mode and then I can move my finger up to this one and then I can press and hold that and just zoom into whichever part of the screen I want so that's what those two are there the next one along is, as you can tell by the style of the icon, it is another overlay. Uh, and this is my buy me a coffee. So this is where I pop out my thing and say, if you're enjoying this content, then don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. And also if you're really enjoying it, then the best way to support the channel is to head over to my buy me a coffee page at buymeacoffee.com slash take one tech. And so I have that one out there as well. 
Uh, I won't pop out too many of these. <laughs> but the next one, whoops a daisy, I've just accidentally pressed it again. Sorry about that. Let me get that off the screen. <laughs> the next one along, I won't bother popping all of these out. This is where I can pop out a thing about booking a call. So if you do want to have your any of your tech questions answered or have any tech issues, then you can always head over to takeonetech.io slash consultation and book a call with me directly from there as well. So I have an overlay for that. But uh, the next two are basically, I have a uh, overlay for my mobile. Uh, so uh, if I want to show stuff on the screen, so you can see that this is basically, again, it's the overlay, overlay style of button. And this is my uh, phone in there. And then the next one is basically the same, but with a phone in landscape, because sometimes I'm showing, if I want to show the uh, use the uh, uh, camera app to show something as a, actually bring it in as a uh, uh, <laughs> I'm losing my train of thought here as a video <laughs> to be able to show the video from the camera uh, then I have it in landscape and so that is what that signifies so this is basically two overlays that I can add into any scene that will show either the uh, the camera in portrait or the camera in landscape the next three are going to be interesting to some, but uh, a nightmare to others, and that is Pro Mouse. So I know some people uh, really don't like Pro Mouse, but I'm still a fan, and it's still working fine for me. I've, I do not understand why uh, Pro Mouse works flawlessly for me and not for other people. But anyway, nevertheless, it is what I use. And so the uh, the Pro Mouse icon I have here is uh, used to activate Pro Mouse if I want to toggle it on and off. The next one, I'm actually pressing it right now, is to zoom my Pro Mouse. Uh, and the next one is if I want to use the spotlight feature on Pro Mouse, which is this one, which basically just uh, spotlights a particular area of the scene. So I have those three all together. Now, once again, I find that I can just find these buttons on my Stream Deck because you're only ever like, I, you're either on the top row or you're one down from it or you're on the bottom row and you want up from it so it's very easy to find you know where you are so this is I'm really curious to see about the loop deck and how I end up liking it but uh, with the stream deck certainly I can just find these things and I always know where my zoom is and my uh, spotlight and things like that so that's two rows down. Let's come down to the next one. And uh, we've already done that one, which is live demo mode. Uh, I always keep my main scene, which is the sort of this scene. I always keep that one uh, right at that bottom corner because then I can always just sort of get back to it whenever I need to. So that's what that one is for. Now, the next ones are basically all different scenes. And uh, it's actually this scene that I'm in at the moment. So you can see that that is the scene that I'm in at the moment. And the reason for these icons is because um, I'm basically using a 43-inch a monitor, which is quite a large, uh, large monitor. And so I basically put things in either one of the four sort of corners of the screen. And in fact, if I come into live demo mode, you can see that the thing that I am sharing at the moment is right down here in this corner. Uh, and then I've got my uh, my Ecamm stuff is all up in the top. So if I want to do uh, a little show you something about that in live demo mode, then I can just zoom into this top corner. Uh, and then basically I'm zooming in to give you a sort of like... Uh, uh, this would be effectively 1080p because the size of my monitor, as I say, it's 43 inches and it's 4K. So each quarter is like 1080p basically. And so uh, rather than when I'm doing screen demos and often you'll find that I'm doing uh, multiple different things. So I'm, I might want to show one app, then another app, then a website and things like that. And so this basically gives me like four different quadrants to work from. So I've got this one here with all my Ecamm stuff in, but then I could have like a, a web browser down here. I could have another web browser or an application up here and another application down there. And then I can flick between all of these. I could also have something that's up here, like over the top of, of or uh, behind the Ecamm interface because the Ecamm interface wouldn't be shown through on the uh, on the output if I'm using a screen sharing overlay. So that's the way I have my sort of monitor set up. So then these then are the uh, the four different um, uh, layouts and the four different quadrants. And you can see how it's this one is the bottom right hand corner. This is the top left corner. This is the top right and uh, I've got my left and right there, haven't I? <laughs> top right, bottom right. <laughs> top left, bottom left. Now, I've also, with the, uh, where I have my my uh, picture in picture, if you like, this, uh, my camera positioned within the scene. Obviously, I'm looking at you now in the camera, but when I look down at that app, I want it to look like I'm actually looking at it so you can see that I'm looking like into the screen. Uh, and so that's why on the ones where I have my uh, uh 
down to the bottom right, <laughs> I have my picture on the right. And uh, the way that works out is that it just looks like I'm looking at it. Uh, and then the ones where I'm at the bottom left, uh, I have my picture on the left. And so if I just sw uh, switch to one of those now, uh, this just happens to have audio hijack in. But now when I look at that app and I'm literally looking at the app now, it just looks like I'm in looking in the right place in the screen to you. You can see that I'm looking down towards the app. So that is why I just have those different layouts. And as I say, I've basically got uh, four different layouts like that. Uh, so there's uh, top and bottom, left and right, basically. So that is what uh, what those ones are. Uh, the next one is my uh, top down camera, which actually I haven't got switched on, but that's just using Camo by Reincubate with an old iPhone 5S. So that is what I'm using for my top down camera for when I do use it. Um, the next one down here is actually my uh, Stinger tra transition, which <laughs> I set up, but I still don't really use it. But that's basically this uh, transition like this. And this is basically just an overlay. So I can just play that and it will just come over the top of uh, everything. Uh, like that uh, but what I can do is I can rather than set that up with timings and everything like that so that it just comes on every time with scene transitions what I can do is I can just do it manually so if I want to go and activate that stinger transition and go straight to my uh, main profile uh, I've just pressed it again <laughs> then what I would do with that let me get that out of the way uh, I'm not trying to push my buy me a coffee page on you honestly uh, so this one if I just press the stinger and then flick back to my main scene then you'll see that as the stinger disappears we're back to uh, this main scene and if I want to go back to that other one again then uh, what I can do is I can just uh, press that again uh, and then flick back to this other scene and there we go that is to make a transition between two different scenes now, uh, these three here are something that I set up, but then I haven't really used it. And uh, the reason why I set them up is because uh, I have got a teleprompter, but I don't usually make... This is just getting ridiculous now. <laughs> I promise I'm not just popping this one out on purpose. Um... Yeah, I have got a teleprompter, but I don't use it for teleprompting. I don't have scripts, I don't have notes or anything like that. However, when I made the video about the release of uh, Ecamm Live version 3.9, which was epic, <laughs> and I saw all the release notes, I thought there's no way that I'm going to remember all those. And I definitely didn't want to miss any of them because they're all just like awesome features that everybody needed to know about. So I thought, right, well, I will install the uh, teleprompter software on my computer and have it so that I can just basically scroll through the list of features uh, and then I can, as I'm doing my little presentation, whatever, I can talk about the different features. Uh, and so for that use case, I did it, of course, create icons. I couldn't have controls on here <laughs> that didn't look the same. So I created these three icons basically for the teleprompter. And uh, basically one of them is page up, the other one is page down, uh, and then this one is to actually play. So if you want it to scroll, as it happens, I didn't end up using it. I just went through and uh, looked at all the different features uh, and I lost my place in the uh, the notes and I just forgot about it in the end. But that is what those are for. So it's basically the idea of that is it's for a teleprompter for either page up, page down or to uh, play if it's just going to run. The next one is for a uh, mystery overlay. <laughs> what could it be? Well, that's the point. It's for if I'm doing uh, demos and things like that. Sometimes I've got something that I just need to be able to put up on screen as an overlay, uh, but I'm not going to create a custom button for it. I'm not that... Uh, <laughs> that that way inclined all the time uh, for like just a one-off or something like that but this basically then just becomes a uh, an overlay button so if I've got something that I just need to pop on the screen for a particular video uh, then this is that button that I would just assign to whatever I need to put up for that one particular use case so that's what uh, that button is <laughs> and then uh, we sort of got out of line here haven't we but the next one that I haven't talked about yet is this one down here uh, and this is actually how I am signifying green screen screen share overlay and uh, it's a bit of a weird icon for that I suppose you might think but the way that I use green screen screen sharing <laughs> the green screen effect applying to a screen sharing overlay is usually if I'm doing presentations or things like that where I want to bring in uh, text so I don't do slides as such uh, in the sort of traditional sense but I do bring on information onto the screen as uh, you know information as uh, sort of bullet points or things like that where it needs highlighting uh, I don't do it so much on this channel really uh, but I do in my uh, sort of work roles and other course material and things like that that I create and so that is what that signifies to me it is an overlay that's bringing in you know bullet points or information or things like that and so that is the that is the reasoning <laughs> that I've got to give uh, for why I have that as the symbol for green screen screen share 
overlay. And I basically have that right at the top of the stack of all of my overlays. So if I uh, come to here a minute, uh, come back into demo mode, and then I'll just zoom in on this part of the screen. Uh, basically here I've got, um, <laughs> in fact, wouldn't you know it, I think what I've done is just for the last video that I made, I actually moved it or no, it isn't, it's right there at the top. So I've got that screen share there and that is basically my uh, my green screen uh, screen sharing. So that means that uh, I can bring in whatever I want in if I've got a keynote running or something like that with the green background using the green screen trick, <laughs> then that is how I activate that. Now, if I am uh, doing that, then I'll often have a series of slides in Keynote uh, for the different animations or things like that that I want to bring in. And so these buttons here are basically uh, just to uh, advance to the next slide. Now, in Stream Deck, there is a plugin for uh, Keynote and also for PowerPoint. So if I come down to the Keynote one, you can see here we've got next slide and previous slide. And so that is what those actions are. Uh, and that's basically just sort of skipping forwards and backwards through the slides. So I can toggle on my green screen, uh, screen sharing, uh, and then I can advance through the slides. And then if I need to take it off the screen, I can just toggle it off and then toggle it back on whenever I need it. So those ones, uh, that's one of the few that is actually just the uh, the keynote uh, uh, actions rather than rather than <laughs> Ecamm Live actions. Uh, by the way, all the ones that I've talked about so far, I mean, these are all just create uh, changing scenes. So it's just the standard action in Stream Deck. Uh, for, uh, sorry, this uh, the Ecamm plugin for Stream Deck. Uh, same with this top-down camera, just the same. This one for the Stinger, that's basically the um, uh, play animation in uh, in Ecamm Live as well. So play uh, play video overlay. Uh, sorry, play animation. Yeah, we're right first time. <laughs> uh, these ones for the teleprompter are actually just uh, keystrokes. So I've got a, uh, actually I've got a macro that I created in, um, uh, I've forgotten the name of the app now. <laughs> the app that I use all the time that I uh, can't stop going on about. And the name of it has completely escaped me. Uh, keyboard Maestro, <laughs> there it is. Uh, so that one I've created macros for that and then that basically tells it to start and stop. But that is using my specific app that I've got for my uh, teleprompter, which incidentally is, I think it's just called teleprompter actually. But as I say, I don't really uh, really use it. It's not even in my dock. No, it's gone. But anyway, <laughs> that's what that is. Um, so uh, the next one though, the last one on this page is this one here. And that says in case of scene emergency <laughs> and that is my button for if I am trying to flick to a particular scene and I go to the wrong scene then sometimes that sort of thing can make you feel a little bit flustered like you're in the middle of a recording or a live stream and you're like oh no I've gone to the wrong place I need to just get back to where I was well fortunately you can press uh, control backspace and in fact let me just check uh, command backspace I should say in Ecamm Live and it will take you back to whatever scene you were at previously so no matter what you do, if you're in your, you know, go to a screen sharing one and then you flick to a top down one, you think, oh, I didn't want to go there. I just want to get back to the screen sharing. Just press command backspace and it will get you back to the last scene that you were in. So I set up a multi-action for this so that basically if I was doing a demo or a screen demo or something like that and I was in a different app, I do need to make sure that the Ecamm Live is the foremost app. And so that little button there in case of scene emergency <laughs> is just a basically a multi-action and there are only two actions and it is basically one of them is to uh, open Ecamm Live which would bring it to the front. Uh, and then the next one is the backspace to get back to wherever we were previously. So that's that. On to the next page and uh, along the top we've got uh, basically the same that I had before for the uh, the record button. This is just go live. It actually does the same thing. It uh, basically just switches to my uh, uh, my intro, my sort of countdown for my live and then it presses record. So that's, uh, it doesn't matter what scene. I mean if I press that it will take me to my countdown scene and then start the uh, the live stream. So that's what that one is. Um, this one here is, uh, it looks like a little monitor with a uh, little arrow out. Uh, I've got a spelling mistake in there. Naughty boy. There we go. Let me change that. <laughs> video monitor. So in Ecamm Live, you can uh, have the video output go to a video, video monitor. So I have it usually go into my teleprompter. So now I'm looking at my teleprompter and I can see my output so I can see what's going out basically. So this is a toggle for me to toggle it on and off because sometimes I want it on, but actually sometimes I don't want it on. Uh, and so I've just got this button here and that is basically the icon that I've created to signify um, 
the video monitor out. And again, it's a dual action. The first one opens Ecamm Live. Uh, and if Ecamm Live is not the foremost applica application, that will bring it to the front. And then the hotkey to toggle the video monitor is Shift Command E. So it basically is just a hotkey to do that. Next one along here, uh, there's a few here that are not necessarily Ecamm related. So um, before I was put on to the, uh, the accessibility feature to zoom in and out of the screen by uh, Mr. Phil Binks. So thank you again for that. You've saved me a lot of time. <laughs> what I used to do was I used to change the resolution of my screen to be instead of 4K, uh, uh, 1080, actually to change it to 1080p. Um, and so this button here basically is a little toggle that I've got to change the screen resolution. And that again was a uh, keyboard maestro. Uh, and so I just press that button and it would change the display for me. Uh, so I don't really use that one now. I could probably lose that one, but that's what that is for anyway. Um, the next one along here is show and hide desktop uh, icons. Uh, so again, that is an e a uh, macro that I've got in um, uh, in keyboard maestro and that's basically it just shows and hides all of the the icons on my desktop now i know that you can do this in ecamm live itself you can have it so that when you are screen sharing you don't want to show the icons uh, but sometimes i might actually want to do that so i thought i'd rather just be able to show and hide them manually and so that's what that button is there these buttons here are basically uh all sort of like affiliate links, I guess, uh, but for me to actually talk about them. So it might be a good time for me to say, uh, in fact, down here, you can see I've got the little Ecamm Live one. So if I press that button, it's gonna change me to a scene. And the scene is this one. And this is for me to say, I'm making this video right now in Ecamm Live, all live, no edits, and almost first take, <laughs> as I explained earlier. And this allows me to create all of these videos uh, just on the fly using my Stream Deck to change scenes and do all of those things. Uh, and it's really made my life a hell of a lot easier than it was before I found it because I was a sucker for editing and uh, used to really give myself problems <laughs> by giving myself such a bad job to do of, uh, or giving myself such a big job to do of editing because I was so, always so terrible. But Ecamm Live saved me from that because as I say, it just allows me to sit down, make these videos in one take with just me and my stream deck. And I highly recommend you give it a try. Head over to takeonetech.io slash Ecamm and uh, get yourself a free trial now. And it is an affiliate link, but that will help out the channel. So that's is what I've got to say about Ecamm Live. And that is what that button was for on my stream deck. It just played that little scene for me to just go and uh, ramble on. on. <laughs> and I do have one of those for uh, Ecamm Live. I've also got one for TubeBuddy, which I love as well. Uh, I've also got one for Epidemic Sound, which has been great. Uh, and also for Set App, because I do do uh, quite a few reviews. I've done quite a few reviews and there are still plenty more reviews to come of Set App apps. <laughs> What's that? You don't know what Setup is? Let me tell you. Setup is <laughs> a subscription service that gives you access to over 200 great applications for the Mac. And it almost acts like a little mini sort of app store, if you like, sitting on your Mac. And you can go and try all these apps out and download them. And all you have to pay is one monthly fee of $9.99. Now, I was already using a load of these apps before, um, but to get them all in this one bundle with Setup is just really good because it does mean that you can just try them out. And if you don't like them, you can... Uh, take them off your computer or if you've got some that you just need to use occasionally you can just download the tool that you need for just that one job perhaps uh, and then you can offload it this is something that you probably wouldn't go and buy the app for itself uh, but because you've just got them all at your disposal then it's uh, it's a great way to get access to all of these great tools they are all quality tools by the way as well it's not uh, sort of filled with any fluff or anything like that they are just all really good helpful sort of utility style applications so head over to takeonetech.io slash setup and get a free trial of that. Now, the way the free trial works is you get, I believe it's a week or is it two weeks of the uh, of setup and you can try as many of the apps as you want. If you go on to sign up for it, you will get a free month and I will get a free month of setup as well. So that is just to let you know how the affiliate program for them works. Uh, but you do get the extra free month yourself as well. So that is uh, that is set up. <laughs> I'm not going to go through all of my little affiliate uh, <laughs> uh, links that I've got, but if I just come back to my other scene and there we go. So that was basically these uh, these ones here. The other one I've got is about my website. So if I want to tell people about my website, then I have a, a little similar sort of style uh, scene that I have for that as well. 
The reason why these are all here is because I'm generally in my main scene, my main profile, and I know that I can just come and press this little button at the top to go to the next screen. Uh, and then I've just got these basically all to hand around that button. So it's easy to sort of uh, roll my finger off and uh, find exactly where they are. Now the uh, the next one along here, these two here, so bearing in mind that this is sort of my live stream setup, these sort of ones down here are all related to live streaming really. I've got the same one for my main scene because I use that on my live stream as well. So that's just the same button that I had on the other page but it just saves me flicking backwards and forwards. Uh, these ones down here are basically for the uh, sort of different layouts I have for my guests. So I've got either a, uh, a two up like this, I've got a three up, <laughs> I've got a four up and then if I'm lucky <laughs> and have four friends come on, then I've got this one for a uh, five person layout as well. So that is um, what those are. Now, let me just come back. The trouble is now I've got to get back to my first page to show this, to give this demo. <laughs> so let me come back to there. Um, I've also got a, uh, the two buttons here. So this is basically show the last uh, comment. So this one here would just pop up the last comment on the screen. Uh, and again, you can tell it is this sort of style of, uh, of overlay. So it is an overlay uh, style. And then this one is to hide the, uh, the comment that's on the screen as well. I've also got this one, which is basically if we were having a uh, uh, doing screen sharing and had up to three uh, three guests on there as well. So that's just another scene layout, basically. Uh, this one's another scene layout with uh, basically a camera and top down camera and screen sharing. Uh, I've got another one for be right back. I've never actually used that. I've never actually had to leave my live stream, but that is just a one to, for if I did ever need to interrupt, then I could just pop that one up. Uh, these ones are all for sort of stinger overlays, but with the numbers. Uh, I've basically got a countdown from 10 to 1. I did have this thought that when I started this channel, I'd be doing, you know, top 10 this, top 5 apps, top 4, whatever they are. Uh, and although I haven't actually used them much, but I do still have buttons for them. So this is just basically a stinger transition with that on. Uh, then one that I've missed out up here is this one. And this is for my grid. And this is what I use to lay out my, uh, my scenes. So if I just come into uh, live demo mode for a moment, uh, then if I toggle the grid on, then what you'll see is this uh, grid that I have going on in the background. Uh, and that is uh, what I use. Whoops, Daisy, I zoomed in a bit too far there. That is what I use to uh, basically, uh, let me just take this one off. You see, I've got this grid that I use to lay out all of my scenes and you can get that for free from my website at takeonetech.io. Uh, I'll leave a link to it in the uh, description as well. Uh, and uh, that's, yeah, it's just a free template basically to help you when you are laying out your scenes. So that is the uh, this one, the little grid overlay. Uh, and then down here, I've just got some related to uh, to my live streams, basically. So I do my 365 videos in a year overlay. Uh, and then I've also got this one, which is basically my live stream lower third. So that one here, this little live button, that just pops up that, which is the lower third that I have going on during my live streams. And then that just sort of fits in with all of my other overlays then for uh, of all of my other scenes. That just comes over the top of all of them. So I've then got the space for my comments just down below. Uh, and for my uh, guests and things like that so that though in a nutshell is basically how I have my uh, my stream deck set up so there's basically as I say two pages of uh, icons uh, I've lost my place again there we go <laughs> two pages of uh, of icons that are all controlling all of my functions on uh, on Ecamm I do have the same sort of setups as well for the other use cases that I have for uh, for Ecamm as well and, and I'm going to make these available, as I say, on the website with all of my other icon packs. So take one tech.io store to go and grab your copy over there. Uh, I'll just make them the same as all of my other icon packs at $10. I'm not going to actually create the Stream Deck profiles in this case because they are all specific to all of my scenes. So usually with my uh, my Zoom icon pack and my Keynote icon pack, I actually did go and create all of the links through to all of the different things. Whereas with these ones, because I've got multi-actions in and because obviously you'd need to have all of the scenes and stuff like that, uh, it's literally just the icons in these cases. So you would need to just basically drag them onto whatever settings you've got for your uh, stream deck. If there are a, um, any any specific scenes or things like that, that you want, do reach out. I'm always willing to uh, look at uh, adding to icon packs and things like that and making them more complete. So I'd love to hear how you're using it and if we could uh, make these icon packs any better for you. So that's all for this video, but don't go anywhere because <laughs> there will be some more great, uh, you can see what I'm doing now, can't you? Look at that. I've, I've, uh, I was still showing my screen and you can see my little trick. I've pressed the end button. So I'm just about to go into my end screen. <laughs> Let me come out of that. <laughs> the, the secret's out. You could tell then.
So uh, I will leave a link to some more of my uh, Stream Deck videos over on the right hand side. And uh, hey, why not the Ecom Live playlist over on the top? So until the next video, have a wonderful day.